Hi, this is Dr. Paul. In this video, we're going to discuss horizontal conjugation. So what is horizontal conjugation? It's simply the process whereby, whether we're looking to the right or to the left, we get all the parts of our visual pathway working harmoniously so that there's no pathology. So when you look to the right and you feel fine, you can thank the um, inner workings of the horizontal conjugation pathway for that. And the, the structures involved are going to be some eye muscles as well as some internuclear neurons. We have a cranial nerve 3 nucleus, a cranial nerve 6 nucleus, which is in the pons. We also have the MLF, the medial longitudinal fasciculus. Now before discussing the actual physiology and anatomy, we need to understand the important components of our visual system. So as it relates to the horizontal conjugation pathway, we have muscles. And the, the muscles that are going to be used are going to be the lateral rectus, there and here. And then medially or nasally, we have the medial rectus muscle. Now the lateral rectus helps us look outwards. So if we're looking to the right, on the right side, the lateral rectus helps you to abduct. If we're looking to the left, the left side, the lateral rectus helps us to abduct. Now if we're looking to the right, the left eye has to look to the right as well. Okay, and that is adduction. Same thing with if we're looking to the left, the right eye has to adduct. Now adduction is done with the help of the medial rectus whereas abduction, or looking outward, is done with the help of the lateral rectus. Okay, so the medial rectus is going to be innervated by cranial nerve 3, whereas the lateral rectus is innervated by cranial nerve 6, which is in our pons. So proper conjugation is going to be maintained with the help of these internuclear neurons. So let's say, for example, we want to look to the right. We'll use that as our example to understand the pathway. So what happens is in the brain, the reticular formation sends input to the right nucleus of cranial nerve 6. Okay, What that's going to do is transmit a signal to the lateral rectus on the right side, forcing the eye to look to the right. Okay, Now that same nerve impulse is transmitted from cranial nerve 6's nuclei to the contralateral nucleus of cranial nerve 3 and it does that by first going to the medial longitudinal fasciculus then transmitting a signal to cranial nerve 3 nucleus and that sends a signal to the left-sided medial rectus forcing it to contract and to pull the eye to the right and we get this eye on the right side moving to the right and this eye on the left side moving to the right and that gives us a well harmoniously planned out right-sided horizontal conjugation now, if we were to switch it around and look to the left, the initial signal from the reticular formation is sent to the cranial nerve 6 nucleus, which stimulates the left-sided lateral rectus, and it contracts and it pulls the eye to the left. At the same time, the cranial nerve 6's nuclei runs to the contralateral side, passes through the medial longitudinal fasciculus, stimulates cranial nerve 3 nucleus on the right side, and that is going to lead to the stimulation and contraction of the medial rectus, pulling the muscle this way, pulling the eye that way. So we get conjugate gaze to the left side in this instance. And if everything's working fine, then when you look to the right or to the left, it should look normal and you shouldn't have any associated pain or dizziness or um, blurred vision, etc. Now, sometimes things don't work out this smoothly. Now there's a condition known as a horizontal gaze palsy and a horizontal gaze palsy occurs when there is an issue with both the abduction and the adduction and that's going to be caused by cranial nerve 6 involvement right because let's say we wanted to look to the left and there's something wrong with cranial nerve 6 not only can we not pull our eye over to the left but that signal isn't going to be sent properly over to the contralateral side to pull our right eye to the left. 
Okay, so our horizontal gaze will be um, disturbed both left or right-sided because it involves the nucleus of cranial nerve 6 either way. Then we have another condition, and this is highly tested on the USMLE, known as an internuclear ophthalmoplegia. And this condition has to do with something wrong with our MLF, our medial longitudinal fasciculus. And what is going to result from this is a problem with adduction. Okay, whether we're looking right or left, we're not going to get the appropriate action of the medial rectus. So let's say we wanted to look left. Okay, cranial nerve 6 stimulates the lateral rectus and our left eye moves to the left. Now, cranial nerve 6 is functional and it sends a signal over to the MLF. Now the MLF, there's a lesion in the MLF. And the signal doesn't make its way through to the cranial nerve 3 nucleus. So what happens is we don't get stimulation of our, of our medial rectus to look to the left. So while the left eye looks to the left, the right eye is still going to look forward. The same thing happens if we wanted to look to the right. If we wanted to look to the right, on the right side, our cranial nerve 6 functions properly, pulls our lateral rectus to pull that eye to the right, but then the signal from cranial nerve 6 makes its way to the MLF and it doesn't get through again, meaning that the left eye in this instance will continue to look forward. Okay, so the issue is between cranial nerve 6 and cranial nerve 3 nuclei. Okay, and so on attempted lateral gaze, you're going to get a palsy of the medial rectus muscle. 